regardless of our level of consciousness, it's so easy to get caught up in your identity being in your world and the things around you and what you say you built and who you say you are. And through all of that stuff, Victor, my rituals with my breath practices, um, which were growing quite a lot uh, to hours a day with meditation and breath work and, and my physical practices, because the stress of the world was so much that my rituals had to match that for me to stay in a state of, of calmness and consciousness and leadership. The more power that we have to muster up, the more our rituals have to match that. And so as I started to come back home to me and to who I am and to what I want and started to let go of this fascination with, as you said, being a savior, regardless of how I was conscious of not needing to save anyone, I, at the end of the day, was the one who needed to be saved from my own saviorness. <laughs> Bienvenidos a Volver al Futuro Podcast, donde platicamos con las mentes que nos impulsan a crear el nuevo paradigma de salud y bienestar. Conducido por Víctor Sadia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today we have Travis Stephens. Travis Stephens is a real estate investor and developer. He's a big proponent of conscious capitalism one that reinvents the way we do business for the sake of the planet and the millions of individuals who live in distressing circumstances. Travis uses his heart before his mind, which makes him even more successful. He's about to launch a new app that reunites the best breathwork coaches and experts from around the world. I was surprised by this deep conversation about the poetics of breath and the breath within the poetry of living. Then you'll have the file to be sent to me. Okay. okay, great. And I'm starting the recording on my phone right now. Yeah. By any chance you have um, earplugs or a microphone? If not, I do that's okay. have AirPods, yep. Okay, let's try the audio with AirPods. I'm not sure if it's going to be better. Sometimes it's not, but let's try. Okay, let's... Can you hear me? Yeah, it's still on the computer. And I... Uh, let's see... Okay, can you hear me now? I can hear you, although the sound is a bit more metallic. Yeah, it's um, not on the AirPods yet. Yeah, so so I, I prefer to have it uh, as you were, and then uh, you can send me your files too, and that we will work the, be the best version. Well, it's, it's not hooking to my computer. That's why it sounds a little funky. My Bluetooth, I struggle with them hooking up to my computer. Uh, hold on, let me let me shut off all my other Bluetooths. So it says they're hooked up, Victor, but I'm not. It's not coming through them. Okay. What yeah. So you you can put them back in the case, and and we can we can go as you were. Try this one more time here. Hmm. Okay, buddy. You I, I think I'm still on the computer, right? I think so. Just... But even better if you if you if you put them back in the case and Okay. Good. My apologies. No, no, no problem. That's you know, AirPods are not very good for for recording anyway. Okay. That's why I always use a cable. Yeah. Cool. I've got my phone sitting right in front of me, and uh, I'll start the recording there. Good. Go ahead. Um, okay. Your last name, uh, Stephens. 
Yes, sir. Stephens. Stephens. Good. All right. So are you ready? Yes. Good. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today we have Travis Stephens. Travis, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure, Victor. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about breath. <laughs> what is breath to you? Oh, that's such a beautiful question. Um, to me, breath is the beginning of life on the planet. It's, in my opinion, breath is God at its source. And when we come into this physical plane and we exit the womb, the first intent is to get the child to do what? It's to breathe. And as we're exiting this physical plane, the last thing we do is take our last breath. And so to me, breath is source, it is life. And our bodies are 99 to the 14th power of empty space. And if our bodies are empty space and breath made up of oxygen and other gases is empty space and it keeps us alive, then the only logical explanation is that it's consciousness meeting consciousness and designed to keep us alive and thriving. So to me, breath is source. It is God. It is life. When did you start uh, thinking about breath and feeling this narrative um, working through you? That's a bit of a funny story. <laughs> I lived in Denver, Colorado, and I was in a beautiful relationship and she was interested in breath work. So I became interested in breath work through her. Her name was Irina Vlada. And she um, still a breath coach yet today. And I used to go down to, I lived in the Four Seasons and I would go down to the spa and I would get ready and I would get ready at 4.30 a.m. every morning. So I'd be alone, of course. And I would go through my rituals and uh, I'm going to get ridiculed for saying this, but my breath work started in the hot tub. I would, I would do cold therapy. So I'd move from the hot tub to the cold, ice cold showers in Denver. And I would, as I was moving between them, I just had this childlike curiosity of, Hey, I wonder how long I could hold my breath. And there was a clock by the hot tub. And so I'd go into the water and I found this, it was salt water in the hot tub. And I found this incredible piece underneath the water as I held my breath. And I found very transcendental to be able to go inside and go into a state of meditation and actually connect to the water and connect to me and therefore connect to source. And I started doing that every morning and realizing that I was holding my breath for three minutes and then it was over three minutes. And I was like, wow, this is, this is incredible. And so as I was doing this, the curiosity continued to build and I was a youth I'm a YouTube fanatic I've learned 90 percent of what I know from the University of YouTube I mean it's such a gift yeah. there you don't need college anymore I'm just going to come out and say it and so I went on to YouTube and of course first thing popped up Wim Hof right so I watched the video and I the next morning I go down into the hot tub and I practiced my first session of Wim Hof sitting in the hot tub. And uh, which, again, is I have to absolutely request that no one does that. But when I felt the tetany of the breath work in my hands and my feet, I just became alive with what is this energy that's coursing through my body that makes my hands and my feet feel like they're going to explode. And the water actually holds in this energy as your, as your body's increasing in alkalinity and your body's increasing in pH levels, they increase together. Um, it offsets the blood enough that you get this incredible feeling called tetany and it's the tingling in the hands and the feet and can tingle in other places as well. And so I just became obsessed with it. And I started a ritual of breath work there 
And then I started diving into the studies of breath work. And then I started to see the just the changes in my life. I started to see the ability to stay calm. I started to notice that my nervous system was no longer reacting to the world around me. I, I was an avid meditator, still am. I was an ad, avid fitness person and I took very good care of myself, but I just really felt the just qualitative, quantitative, quantum effects of breath work on my nervous system. And so I fell in love with it then and there and my journey started. There's there's a lot of directions that we can take this, but before we move into another topic, which are all related is what are you doing now with 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 uh, the breath source app? What what is what's your goal and what's the model to integrate what breath means to you into into a business and also transform what a business or a, or an app can can even mean and generate uh, in the community? Well, when I talk about the breath source and the breath source app. I like to give gratitude to the angels that created the opportunity for the breast source to be here. And um, as far as conscious capitalism goes, I own a national real estate investment company in the United States. Uh, we have worked in nine states across the country. And in those nine states, we have purchased um, uh, close to 5,000 apartment units and hotel complexes that were severely distressed. These are not nice complexes in nice areas of the country. These are the most challenged areas in the world. And as we would go into these areas, we would recognize that we started to have to build our own vertically integrated company because the areas were so tough that property management companies and construction companies wouldn't work in these areas and we couldn't we couldn't count on the people that were were able to work in these areas so we decided to build our own company and one of the companies within our company is a security company I'm sorry a construction company we also have a security company we have a property management company we have a nonprofit company to help stop evictions in these areas but the construction company we really struggled with finding people that we could count on to hire. And if we would hire them, they would show up, work a couple of days, and then they would quit. And so we turned to um, hiring homeless people. And there's a bridge that we call Joey's Bridge that was out underneath a particular complex. And we went out underneath that bridge and we hired Joey. And Joey was in there with his sign and he had his kids with him actually that day. And his kids lived nearby in a foster home. And it was the only way he could see his kids. He was released from prison. He got out. He was trying to find a job. He could not find a job. Everywhere he went, he was turned down. And this is one of the secular issues of the, the prison system, the penal system. This is also a secular issue of the military is that when they get out, it's so hard for them to find employment that they end up turning to drugs into things that cause them to go right back in. And Joey couldn't find a job and he was sitting underneath the bridge with a sign. We went and picked him up. And because we buy these hotels and apartment buildings, we're able to house them. And so we set up his unit. And that day we took him and got him groceries and got him set up and he just couldn't believe it was true. Um, he literally said, I thought you guys were going to kill me and take my organs and sell my organs on the black market because there's no way this is true. And, and so once we took him in, we onboarded him, health insurance, all those types of things that day. And so I put together a, a program so that he would know we were serious. And then we started teaching him and training him. And the, the process really started that day. And that was the beginning of us hiring homeless individuals to build our workforce. And I'm a huge fan of Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dispenza and Dr. Bruce Lipton's work. And so the biology of belief and falling in love with the future self um, and reprogramming the body to a new mind and understanding how to heal from the cellular level out and what's capable when you remove cells from the environment that created the problem. 
Um, so we started putting all that methodology to work and started seeing the homeless people um, that were now becoming housed and healed and all this stuff moving forward at a success rate of about 80%. And so I had projects going all over the country and everybody knew that when Travis showed up to a project, he was going to give a breathwork class. And so I would show up in my suit, I would go in and, and everybody would show up and they'd be laid out on the floor. I mean, 40 to 50 people sometimes. My biggest breathwork class is by far. And everybody's super attentive, you know, because the CEO is here and he's doing his thing and um, so you can't do breath work without feeling the effects. It's one of the coolest things of breath work is that when you understand breath work and you do it, you're going to feel the effects immediately. And so these angels, um, going through the process would get done with the breath work and they would all come up to me and they would all want to have a video or they would all want to have some way to reproduce this incredible feeling that they had just felt. You can you you cannot do breath work and not feel the effects. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Breath work is so powerful that when you do it, you're gonna feel the effects. And so as I was giving these classes, these people felt the effects immediately and they felt that they could tap into their own chemical supply, the supply that the the drugs and the crime and the issues were giving them through the dopamine, through the serotonins, and through their own supply, as Wim Hof says. Um, they were seeing that in the breath work and they were feeling those euphoric feelings and they were feeling that high. So they would come up to me afterwards and say, hey, how can we get your breath work? Can you send us a video? Can you do this? Can you do that? And even though I own two tech companies, I couldn't get them a video. And every time I tried to send a video, something would mess up. And so three years ago on Thanksgiving, I was at my parents' house and I got a text from one of them if I could send them a video. And I said, you know what? It's time to build an app. So the breast source was born off of these angels and their desire to breathe. And so I have give, I give so much gratitude to them. And now the breast source will be taking off across the world in January, this coming 2023. And, uh, how's the world's leading breath experts on it to be able to bring light to the rest of the world. It's amazing that we we call people breathwork experts, right? It's like, um, and, and at the same time, there's so much that we don't know about breath and that, that we do, we can get expert or at least move along the way of the whole spectrum of what breathing means. Um, and and you were telling me that it's it's also on you want to do it as a B corporation, right? Yeah. So one of the fun things about the app and the conscious capitalism piece, and look, there's there's loopholes to everything, and a certified B corporation is a new way of doing publicly traded business or just public business where the business is able to focus on providing a quality product to the people over providing returns to the board of the investors. And so the goal with the breast source is to actually take it public within the first two years as a certified B Corp, because my desire to bring wealth to the breath masters of this planet who have dedicated their lives and dedicated their mastery and dedicated families to their craft it's amazing how we have taken the people who bring the light to the planet and we pay them the least and and uh that time needs to change and so i want to lead that change in this time and see these individuals become very wealthy through their craft through bringing the light to the planet yeah, I think that that that's exactly one of the big tragedies of capitalism that uh, that people and even animals and and, and 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 vegetation that they provide life uh, they are the most exploited, least paid, and least celebrated in our hierarchies. 
And I applaud you for for putting that into 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 action. And and the thing I want to ask you about this is not only with the app, but also with your with your corporation. And when you when you you do your your our academy and our communities and our empowerment, and you're helping all these people. Um, how, as an investor, as a trader, as a broker, uh, as a speculative um, person in the market, believes that pulling someone out of a bridge and giving them insurance and buying him groceries and putting him under a roof is a good investment also for business. I think that's the mindset that we need to shift as mm -hmm. we go forward. Uh, how how was it for you? Well, uh, my definition of conscious capitalism is when you do business in a neighborhood or a city, everyone voluntary or involuntary that is involved benefits. And sometimes we have to look past the surface level. Sometimes someone in that city or someone in that neighborhood needs a change and they don't even know it. We would come into these neighborhoods where no one had renovated the building for 50 years and it was a complete slumlord situation and the rent was $450 a month, but children were living with mushrooms growing out of the baseboards. And the rent needs to go up to $800 a month but the mindset of that neighborhood could be that, hey, these rich people are coming in and they're changing everything just to make more money, but that's not the truth. And the important part is, is educating to see the truth and not sugarcoating the truth, coming in and raising the rents to $2,500 a unit so that you can get higher end blue collar, white collar workers in there, that's a different story. But when you're coming in and you're taking the demographic that has always lived there and just increasing the education, increasing the financial awareness, financial consciousness, and helping them see that they're worth more, they're worth better, they're valuable human beings and valuable assets to this world, they just need a net behind them that can help them get there. And the conscious capitalism piece of that is seeing the value in these individuals like we saw in the homeless. And 100% of the homeless don't have value to give to this planet other than living that life out and deciding to come back at a different time and enjoy another journey here. And it's not our job to save anyone. It's our job to be the grandest version of the greatest vision we hold for ourselves. And if we can positively affect the planet and the people around us through that process, then it's better for everyone. And we had to also realize that we, we're not here to save anyone. We're just here to give an opportunity for someone's light to spark into an, abs into an actual flame and then they can let that flame burn. So one, I want to delve deeper into that word saving, right? Because it's appropriate, we could use it, but then we, were, we would be like giving us a, a, a title that probably we don't deserve because at the end of the day, we were also lucky to be in the shoes that we were born in and it wasn't really... Uh, there's a lot of merit and a lot of work and a lot of things, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's always a bit of luck too. So when you develop a project um, and, and you want to, to have that project working for those people, giving them, uh, as you say, another opportunity, you are not walking in their shoes, but you would like to think as if you were, because in that way, you could probably be more empathic and 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 not be paternalistic in, in, in saving people. So how can we develop strategies and tactics to, to be in other people's shoes in general without being the saviors? 
Victor, that's such a good question. And that's a question that I wish the United States government would ask themselves. And I wish that all the people that think they understand homelessness would ask as well. And the challenge is that they don't like the answer. And the answer is that you need to go experience walking in their shoes. Knowledge is a book on a bookshelf. Wisdom is the ability to use knowledge, but there's a gap between the two. And the only thing that bridges that gap is experience. And it's built one stick or one brick at a time. And that means you need to have perseverance and that you need to have a desire to understand because you can't be understood until you can understand. And so what we did and what I did and what my company did that was generally different was we got down on our hands and knees with them. We heard the stories, we walked with them, we held with them, we cried with them, we talked with them, we were there for them. When they would fall off the wagon, as we called it, we would go find them and we would pick them up and we would put them back on the wagon if they chose to come back to the wagon. I've sat there with countless men and women and written out visions, handwritten visions of how they saw their future self to be after they fell off the wagon so that we could find our way back to home so that we could separate the duality that we're here to experience and find our way back home through that pen and through that paper. And, and whether that stuck for good or not, it didn't matter. At least they knew what home was. And so the answer to that question is experience and understanding that, and this is the challenging piece, this is where spirituality has to mesh with capitalism and this is where spirituality has to mesh with science. I would argue with anyone time and time again that we come here many, 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 many lifetimes to explore experience and discover who we are. And we're all unique, never two experiences are the same. So why wouldn't we keep coming back to expand source self? And the more challenging the lifetime, the more opportunity for growth. And we need to take our hats off and applaud those who have chosen a challenging lifetime. And as you said, and Warren Buffett so readily says all the time, we pulled a lucky card to be born in the United States or wherever we were born that created that opportunity in a family that created this opportunity for me, Travis Steffens, to be who I am today. I have a wonderful family. We weren't born with money, but we were born with love and we were born with support and we were born without trauma, trauma without tragedy. And I lived a lifetime without all that stuff. And so to have that beautiful life and then to inject myself into the trauma and the tragedy allowed the empathy to mold and allowed me to see from an empathic loving standpoint what they were missing. So I wasn't the victim of the situation, but I was able to see the victimhood in a situation where I could understand the opposite of that and that I could have the empathy and at the same time know that I wasn't their savior, that they are their savior or they choose to stay that in this lifetime and I can have nothing to do with that. See, that, that's what I, I now put words into why, you know, when we met, it was like a probably 30 second conversation, but the vibe I got from you or the vibration I got from you is someone that with his eyes and with, with his words and even with his silences uh, conveyed an experience, not only a knowledge, but an experience. And I think that's so, so rare in, in 30 second meetings um, to to really feel that. Uh, so thank you. And and I see you in in that day I also saw you very well dressed with your belts and your and your suits and your and your shoes. And I've seen your photos with 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 these homeless people who you are working with. 
what does it mean for you to to get dressed as you do? <laughs> I believe there's something there. Uh, also, uh, an important insight. So, in this human realm, perception is. I joke about it and I say perception is nine tenths of the law because the way we perceive something affects the way we react in that situation. And so I'm a very visual person. I'm a Sagittarius. I'm a 31 four. I'm a projector. If, if people know these different terms and so I'm very visual and I love beauty. I love the opulence and the beauty of this planet. I love that source has such incredible duality of both ends of the spectrum. And meaning that you have to have what we would consider the ugliest of the ugly to have the beautiful of the beauty. And so people see me and see the custom suits and the belts and the things that you talked about. And I don't just wear them inauthentically because you would have felt that I wear it authentically because I grew into it anybody can go get a custom-made suit and put it on but you're not going to emanate and vibrate and resonate with the power of that particular perception if you haven't earned it if you will and I'm not saying that I've earned it over anyone else but I grew into it over time and I grew into it because it inspired me, it pulled me forward, and it allowed me to be a stronger version of myself. So when I would go to the properties dressed in my suit, and I would care for the people at the properties, it meant so much more that this guy in this three-piece suit is bending down and he's talking to me, and he's walking with me and he's asking me these questions and he's caring for me and I can't tell you how many times Victor I have heard why do you care about me and so being able to shift that perception has been so powerful and it is because of the way that I present myself to the world during the Black Lives Matter movement I was able to point out so much bullshit around this brainwashed item that was used to manipulate people because all of my employees were black all of my residents were black and i'm hand in hand with them the whitest white guy on the planet in a three-piece suit and we're nothing but love for each other and it was such an opportunity and the the suit thank you for bringing that up it's a it's who i am and i i i'm authentic with that and i'm congruent with that and i love that piece of my life. i love it too and and i guess that with not only with 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 fashion and the way we dress but also with food and and with with many things uh the in, industrialized world has really robbed us this um opportunity for for self identification for creating our own identities and, and it's all the same and having a custom made suit and, and and putting the square pocket and really owning the suit owning the identity owning the person that you want to create is something that it's it's rare these days also so either way if you want to dress up or dress down as long as you do it with that conviction that you are wearing the suit and the suit is not wearing you uh i think that's something very powerful actually uh, this week we just released a podcast where we have a pediatrician who said I don't I don't I don't use the white coat, like I, I don't want a a, a, a a child see a doctor in a white coat and feel a difference. I dress in jeans, you know, and those and those kind of of statements and experiences really do mean a lot for this paradigm shifting way of of, of thinking where we are. I wouldn't say breaking up the barriers and the hierarchies, but at least owning them. And that's that's a big, big part of changing things, right? It is. Yeah, beautifully, beautifully said. It is. And I love that you said this. I'm wearing the suit. The suit's not wearing me. And there's a lot of people on the planet that are seeking 
self through material and it doesn't work. It's a never ending treadmill. I have a few suits and I wear them all the time. I have one pair of very nice boots and it's my only pair of boots. I have one very nice belt and it's my only belt. And I don't have a closet full of clothes. I, I don't have stuff I don't use. I can live my life out of a carry-on suitcase and I can look like a billion dollars and feel like a billion dollars every day because I only associate that which resonates the grandest version of myself. Amazing. Uh, so you recently relocated to Tulum in Mexico. Uh, you started your life in a, in a, uh, in Colorado, uh, growing up into a multi-generational ranching family. Um, what what brought you to to Mexico, and what are your ex your expectations, and what what did you want to do in in Mexico? Oh, that's a good question, and uh, this comes to the duality piece again, where in the absence of that which is not, that which is is not, meaning that to understand success, you also have to understand failure. And I had uh, the company, we went through chapter 11 bankruptcy between May of 2021 and May, we exited successful in May of 2022. And COVID is what was our our straw that broke the camel's back, if you will. So we had a bunch of hotels and a bunch of apartment buildings in the roughest parts of the country. And when the government came along and said, you don't have to pay your rent um, and you can't have your hotels open. And yes, there was some subsistence and assistance and some subsidy to that, but it was nowhere near big enough to help companies like us that relied on those things succeed. And so I, ex I set up my life to experience that. And it was something I never would have guessed would have happened. But um, when I went through it, I felt very alone. And I felt like there was nobody that could, I could talk to at that level. We were almost a half a billion dollar company. And I had six companies within the company I was running at that time, a ton of employees and it was scary. And there was a lot of stuff going on and I had to stay strong through that. And I had to be that leader. And I just was alone. And so now I'm grateful that I can help others through that, that as well. And I would talk to anyone that was going through that. And so coming out of chapter 11, one of the things that helped us exit successfully was I built a tiny home company in Phoenix, Arizona. So I always had a vision of building tiny home villages across the country, still a vision of this. And I wanted to provide truly affordable quality housing to people. And so we could build a tiny home for about $65,000, brand new, gorgeous, 600 square feet of living space, and deliver them within 10 hours of the factory. And so I started buying land and then we started building these tiny homes and we started placing with a plan to place them on these, these projects. We had a big investor and um, it was a heavy capital intensive project and we had a big investor. And when the market fell and the crypto tanked, he lost so much money that he just said, I can't, I, I'm 75 years old. I can't lose any more money and make it through my life. And so he said, I'm so sorry, but I have to pull out. And uh I believe that the universe sends us opportunities to shift and to pivot. And so I just had to shut everything down. So we sold everything to our competitor, shut everything down. And I was there to build the factory. So I put everything in storage and had to make my next decision of what I wanted to do. And the breath source app was in my heart. It was on my mind and teaching breath work and teaching health and wellness is such a passion of mine. And it allowed me to focus on that. We still have the real estate. We still have all that going. My little sister, Hannah runs that. And so I decided to come to Tulum and to teach breath work. So now I'm teaching classes five to six times a week through resorts and hotels and yoga studios here. 
spreading that magic and that love and that light. And it's fueling my soul every single day. And we're working on getting the app to the market. Our soft launch will be on winter solstice of December. It'll be in the app store available for those that have the secret code. And then uh, worldwide launch January 15th ish. And um, then I'll leave Tulum and I'll start traveling across the world, actually working with our breath masters and working with corporations to understand the power and the science of breathing through the nose and understand the power of breath work for their people's health and wellness and uh, bring that gift to the planet. Thank you for sharing uh, that story. And, uh, you know, you can tell that it's been, it's been quite a ride the last two, three years for you. And there's, there's a hint of not, not only a hint, there, there's a big thing there of, of, of being courageous and, and fueling all this, um, hope uh through each each breath that you're taking um mm-hmm. and i'm sure that this this project will 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 be amazing um, we'll we'll launch this podcast before the the winter solstice awesome. so it, it it aligns everything and um yeah let's let's where where where, where can we go now <laughs> um we could do Um, I can talk a little bit more about the science of breath, um, the the benefits of it from a medical standpoint. Um, Yeah, I wanted to ask you in in terms, you know, you've been building houses for, for, for and renovating houses for for a while. And now it, it seems that the breath work and breathing, it's become a new house for you that it can become a house for other people at the same time. So let's 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 get a bit poetic and and and, and philosophical about what does a house mean to you and what is a house in terms of the breathing it, it allows for its occupants and, and for the planet where it 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 inhabits this this house. Awesome. That's um, great I, I got that. So Yeah, I've been, uh, thank you for asking, Victor. Uh, I have been building houses for a long time. When I say building houses, we renovated over 400 single family homes. Uh, We have purchased, renovated and sold almost 5,000 units across the country and built six, seven companies over that time went through the chapter 11 that we talked about, went through a total pivot. And it's amazing how our will can take us so far. Our will can be so strong and ego can be tied up in that will. And yet the universe will always bring us back to home. And our heart always knows where home is. Greg Braden and and the Heart Math Institute and Dr. Joe Dispenza and Bruce Lipton, you know, they talk about the power of the heart heart all the time. You have 40,000 sensory neurites in this seven layer crystalline heart. And people don't know that there's seven layers of crystalline in the heart, but there's also seven energy centers inside the body that are the main chakras. And you start to put these little pieces together and the heart knows. It's attached to the crystalline grid. It's attached to the Akashic records. It's attached to all those things. It's attached to the field around you. And I had spun up this world that the universe had the that one thread of and that could just jerk and then unspin the world. And when my world was unspinning, I'll call it, and, and winding down, I went through a lot of stuff. I went through some of the deepest fears of who am I, my identity, regardless of our level of consciousness, it's so easy to get caught up in your identity, being in your world and the things around you and what you say you built and who you say you are. And through all of that stuff, Victor, my rituals with my breath practices, um, which were growing quite a lot, uh, to hours a day with meditation and breath work and and my physical practices because the stress of the world was so much that my rituals had to match that for me to stay in a state of 
of calmness and consciousness and leadership. The more power that we have to muster up, the more our rituals have to match that. And so as I started to come back home to me and to who I am and to what I want and started to let go of this fascination with, as you said, being a savior, regardless of how I was conscious of not needing to save anyone, I, at the end of the day, was the one who needed to be saved from my own saviorness. <laughs> and so breath work was my passion and the app became my focus. And when I started to live what I preached with the app, which was when you take a breath in, in your daily life, hopefully through the nostrils, not the mouth, and it comes into your lungs and it reaches your alveoli, the red blood cell comes along and it has 270 million hemoglobin. And those hemoglobin reach out and they grab four little cosmic prana life force oxygen molecules apiece. So you have over a billion oxygen molecules in one red blood cell, in one cell that takes a microscope to see. You have over a billion little passengers that have pure source energy ready to marry into the mitochondria, into the glucose, and explode with power and energy in this tiny little cell. Bruce Lipton talks about 1.17 volts per cell. Cryon talks about new blueprints and new information and all of that power mixing together and then moving through the blood system up, finding that beautiful carbon dioxide molecule. So this is where the beauty meets the beauty and this is where we're coming home is carbon dioxide is arguably the most powerful molecule in the body because oxygen cannot be accepted into the tissues without carbon dioxide. So here's this just supercharged source cell finding this carbon dioxide molecule, and then they have to swap out energy. So as they talk to one another and they swap out energy, that, that red blood cell now carries that carbon dioxide cell or uh, carbon dioxide energy, used up carbon dioxide molecule back to the lungs and then breathe that back out of the body. And so this is where I encourage everybody to really, really go inside with this next statement. We talked about in the very beginning, what is in oxygen? It's empty space. What is in the body? It's empty space that keeps us alive. Our, and this was something that this came through me uh, about two years ago. I saw a vision that the, our carbon dioxide that comes out of our tissues is coated just like our DNA is coated our carbon dioxide is coated so when Victor is walking through the forest people don't stop to understand that every breath you exhale Victor it's being inhaled by mother Gaia the plants around you literally inhaled and if you can stop and stare at a tree long enough you'll see it breathing and so when that tree inhales that that tree says, this is Victor. This is Victor's vibration. And it's grateful for the opportunity to take life in through you. And then through photosynthesis, it transforms that into oxygen, which is the first and foremost plant medicine. We think about plant medicine all the time, being ayahuasca and wachuma and, and peyote and all these things, which it is. But the first and foremost beginning of time plant medicine is oxygen. And it's made by our brothers and sisters of this planet, which are the plants. And so as we dance with this planet all day, every day, inhaling in plant medicine, transforming it into plant food, we are dancing with the planet and our own vibration and the planet gets to feel each and every 7 billion, 8 billion, whatever it is now of us all day, every single day. And it knows each one of us individually, just like it says in the Bible, God knows every hair personally on your head. Now, granted, we're all source. We're all God. God is everything, but every human, 7, 8 billion are known by every plant on this planet. 
So helping me to return home was one of the best transformational gifts of my life. And being at these places, meeting guys like yourself and ladies like your partner in the Biohack Center and being able to go there and see your magic, Victor, that Biohack Center is just, it's next level. Like it's, it's way beyond anything in the United States. I was so proud of you guys. Like I'm tearing up just thinking about it right now. And uh, that's home for me now is this world. Thank you, my friend. Uh, I don't, I don't believe there are more beautiful words that you just, just, just emerge from you, which is a you that it's called Travis, but it's also the the source energy talking through you and talking through this microphone and getting to the ears of a lot of people and to the ears of the planet and potentially other planets too. In this podcast, we talk about shifting paradigms and 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 I think that clinging to our identities for some time is okay, but at the same time, letting those identities flow, go, and, and regenerate is what will help us change the way we do business, changes, change the way we do medicine, changing the way that we do politics. And um, and yeah, keep on with this dancing uh, from mitochondria to, to the cosmos. Um, thank you so much for this amazing conversation, my dear friend. And I am very excited to see how everything evolves. In a sense, it's already, it's already here and I can already sense it. So thank you for sharing Thank you for sharing you, all of you. You're so welcome. And Victor, thank you for seeing me. Thank you, my friend. Have a great day. You too. It's a wrap, my friend. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, man, you're so welcome. You're so welcome. It's such a pleasure. Nos encantaría recibir tu retroalimentación de estos podcasts para continuar generando contenidos que te sean útiles e interesantes. Si puedes, déjanos un comentario en la página web victorsaadia.com.